yes good morning students so in the previous uh, videos we discussed about two, two types of control methods that is a uh, turn on control and uh, turn off control okay so after that uh, uh, the third type of uh, control is proportional base control okay the proportional th third control method is proportional base control so so you may get the questions in the exams like what is the necessity of base drive control in power transistor okay and explain the proportional why the base drive control is like base drive control methods we discussed two types that is on control and off control this is the third type they may explain what is the necessity of base drive control and explain any one type that may be on control off control or proportional base control okay so the third is proportional base control <coughs> this is the schematic representation or equivalent circuit of the proportional base control technique which is used for the base drive control method okay so this is your equivalent circuit okay so which consisting of the transformer of 1 is to 1 ratio and the sort transformer secondary your bjt switch is there okay and the load side okay this is the fundamental blocks of your proportional base drive control method okay so in this method what happens if the collector current changes due to the load demand so here is the collector so collector where is your collector so yes just a minute so this is your collector if so if the collector current changes because of the load side this is this is a load we are having so because of the variation in the load the collector current is changes okay so what happens if the collector current changes due to the load demand the base drive current is changes in proportional to the collector current so base current also so this your base current is also changes in proportion with the collector current okay so because of the load demand because of the variation in the load if the collector current changes the base current is also changes in proportion to the collector current so if the collector current is 1 ampere so the base current is also 1 ampere that means in proportion same proportion both the <coughs> currents are varying so that is why this method is called as a proportional base current it is called as a proportional base current method okay so why it is called as proportional base so in the circuit arrangement what happens the circuit shown in the figure when the switch s1 is turned on that means here is the switch so this switch is closed so when this is switch switch is closed what happens so the pulse current starts uh, short during the uh, duration i mean the pulse current of short duration the small pulse current will flow through the base of the transistor and the transistor is turned on so when the switch is so when this is switch is turned on so the pulse current pulse current of small short duration is passes through this transformer and it transfers to the secondary winding so it will flows the pulse current flows through the base terminal so the transistor is turns on transistor is going to turn on so once the collector current starts to flow so once the collector current uh, starts flowing so the corresponding base current is also induces so so because of that the collector current starts flowing so once the uh, collector current starts flowing so then the corresponding base current is also initiated okay due to the transformer action so the turn on ratio of this transformer is given as n2 divided by n1 is equal to ic that is collector current divided by base current so ic is equal to beta ib and ib is as it is this this uh, relations we have already discussed in the previous videos so so your ib ib so your ib and ib gets cancelled so n2 divided by n1 so n2 by n1 is equal to beta okay this is the relations of proportional base current that means um, the secondary turns ratio divided by the primary turns ratio is equal to the base uh, i mean uh, beta of the uh, your transistor okay the second is anti saturation control or baker's uh, circuit method so this is also called as anti saturation control or baker's clamping circuit there is a clamping of uh, uh, voltage happens here that is why it's called as a clamp circuit baker is the name of the person who has invented this type of control method for base drive control so that's called as a baker clamping circuits okay so you may get some few questions like this necessity of base drive control explain this uh, this one so there are few of the questions which are asked in the previous uh, uh, year okay so this is the equivalent circuit of baker's clamping circuits or collector clamping circuit okay so it consisting of so the diodes d1 and d2 load transistors and the input supply <coughs> this is the equivalent circuit 
okay so if the transistor is operated in a hard saturation mode what happens if the hard there are uh, transistors can be often operated in two saturations mode so hard saturation soft saturations okay so if the transistor is operated in a hard saturation mode what happens the storage time there is a storage time of every transistor has some storage time so if it is operating in a hard saturation mode then storage time which is increases and the switching speed of the transistor is reduces if the storage time is increased the switching speed is going to reduce okay so by operating the transistor in soft saturation so to uh, make the storage time less and uh, increase the switching time more so if the hard if the transistor is operation uh, operating in a hard saturation storage time increases so switching speed is also reduces if you are operating in the soft saturation storage time is reduced and the switching speed is increased so that is why so it's better to operate the transistors in a soft saturation mode rather than the hard saturation mode okay so this can be accomplished by clamping the collector emitter voltage so here is a clamper circuit is connected so clamper is nothing but so these diodes are connected in a uh, okay so these diodes will clamps the voltage so that is why it's called as a clamper circuit so hard saturation to may uh, operate the transistors in soft saturation there is a clamping of voltages takes place okay so <coughs> here you can see here the clamping of collector current emitter voltage so collector to emit a voltage clamping will happens so then the, your transistors is operates in a uh, soft saturation mode okay now so the collector current is given by so you have to just go through the uh, circuit along with this so collector current ic is equal to applying the uh, kvl to the output loop so applying the kvl to this output loop so you'll get the collector current value so ic is equal to <coughs> vcc minus vcm vcm is nothing but the collector voltage divided by rc so call this as an uh, I, so you know that ic is equal to vcc minus vc divided by rc so instead of vc vcm vcm is nothing but the collector uh, uh, sorry clear clamped voltages okay so the base current without the clamping uh, which is uh, drive the transistors into saturation so base current without the collector clamping so it's given by so if you apply the kvl to the uh, input circuit so here is the, your input circuit so if you apply the kvl to the input circuit so vb so base voltage ibrb vd1 vbe so here so if you apply the kvl to the input loop so vb ibrb so vd1 so vbe so if you apply kvl to input loop so you will get this equation so go on simplify this you will get ib is equal to vb minus vd1 minus vbe divided by rb okay so this is your ib call it as ib or i1 you can say call it as equation number two right now the corresponding collector current is given by ic is equal to beta ib so it's a uh, base uh, uh, formula which we derived in the previous uh, class okay then once the collector on uh, this transistor is turned on so d2 is uh, forward biased and conducts thus the clamping is takes place once the transistor is turned on so this d2 is the forward biased and the clamping of the collector emitter voltage will takes place so you can see here so applying to kvl to this particular loop so how what what loop i have shown here so you just keep your uh, circuit uh, with you so apply the kvl like this okay so you will get the vce um, plus uh, vd2 is equal to vbe plus vd1 so if you calculate the uh, vce from this equation you will get so vc is equal to vbe plus vd1 minus vd2 so apply kvl like this so you can see uh, kvl from vd1 to vd2 vce vbe so like that you apply the kvl you will get the this equation <coughs> okay so the load current is given by il is equal to So VBE is this one from that uh, here from here VC is VBE plus uh, VD1 minus VD. So here from the way just now we uh, apply by applying the KVL we reduce this equation. So from this uh, we have calculated VCE. This is your VBE. So VCE is you just uh, send this to the right hand side. So we will get the VCE. <coughs> okay. Now the load current is given by so the load current ic is equal to vcc minus vc divided by rc so just general equation applying the kvl to the load side so substituting your equation number four equation number four is what this is your equation number four vce so in this so vc here vc you got here so just substitute it so vcc vbe plus vd2 
minus V D1. So, will divided by R C. So, just substitute equation number 4. This equation V C E here you will get I L. So, now applying the KVL at node A. Node A go to I1 minus I2 minus IB. I1 minus I2 minus IB. So, node A is I1. All are outgoing currents. So, outgoing currents. Outgoing currents. Okay. This is the incoming current. So, I1. Incoming current is plus positive. Outgoing is minus I2 minus IB. Right. So, here I1 is incoming minus i2 minus ib okay this is the node a this is the node a apply kvl at that particular node you will get <coughs> this equation okay so i from this you can calculate ib is equal to i1 minus i2 so ib is equal to i1 minus i2 is ic minus il so from the figure you can just refer i2 is you are see here i2 is this is your i2 that is collector current so minus load current so it's a collector current minus load current i2 okay so substitute it so and simplify it so ib is equal to i1 minus ic minus il okay call it as equation number two six sorry so the collector current with clamping so is ic is equal to beta into ib this is known factor so, so call it as equation number seven substitute equation number six and seven so this is your ib substitute here so and rewrite it so ic is equal to beta into that much so go on simplify it for ic so you'll get ic is equal to beta divided by one plus beta into bracket of i1 plus i l this is the equation we'll get for clamping so this is the equation for the collector clamping in case of the your uh, baker saturation baker's clamping method okay so this or anti saturation control there are few of the formulas which are definitely helpful for solving the problems so these are problems you formulas you have to remember so ib formula that's equal to i1 ic is equal to beta ib in the collector emitter voltage so collector current with clamping okay uh, just you note down all these formulas which will help you to solve the problems. So now we will solve the one of the problems on anti-saturation control method. <coughs> so the collector clamping circuit which is shown in the figure. So it's a downside there. There is a figure has a VCC is equal to 100 volts. Okay. VCC is equal to 100 volts. RC is equal to 1.5. VD1 is equal to 2.1. VD2 is equal to this much. VB is equal to 0.7. VB, VBE is, VB is equal to 15 volts rb is equal to 2.5 and beta is equal to 16 so calculate the collector current without clamping so calculate current calculate the collector to emitter clamping voltage vc and the current with clamping so these three parameters you have to calculate and other the required parameters are given in the problem so given just note down the list out the what all the given for, uh, parameters here okay then the collector current with clamping <coughs> you know the equation the collector current with clamping Collector current uh, is nothing but IC is equal to beta into IB. So IB you have to calculate first. So IB you have to calculate what is the equation to calculate IB. So IB is equal to this one. So VB is known, VD1 is known, VBE is known. Just substitute all the values and calculate IB. Substitute IB here and calculate IC. So IC will give us around somewhere around. So 78.08 amps is the <coughs> collector current. Ever without clamping you will get. Next is collector emitter voltage equation is now listed in the formula list. So for this equation, so calculate VB, I mean substitute VBE, VD1 and VD2, you will get VC as 1.9 volts. Okay. So third is the collector current with clamping. So equation is given. So collector current with clamping. So this is the collector current. IC is equal to equation to calculate the collector current with clamping is ic is equal to beta divided by 1 plus beta i1 plus il so you have to find out il load current so load current equation is also given vce vbe vd1 vd2 divided by rc just substitute all this this are all equation this equation is already listed in the formula list okay and also did de derived also from that i have taken here il equation so substitute all the parameter vcc vbe vd1 vd2 rc you will get the IL. So IL is equal to 65.4 ampere is the load current. Now substitute IL, I1 you know, IL you know, beta also given. So substitute all the values, calculate IC that is collector current with clamping. So here clamping means clamping voltages added here. 
so clamping diode dvd1 vd2 are added here that is why it is a collector current with clamping okay so then substitute all the parameters and calculate ic okay so this is about <coughs> the uh, what we can say um, so problems so such type of problems you will definitely get from calculation of uh, collector current without clamping collector current with clamping collector to emitter voltage okay the uh, your uh, parameters may varies but the problems uh, uh, flow is as similar as this one okay so same problems uh, you may i will give some of the problems on your uh, uh, what is that uh, assignments also just go through those problems okay if you got any doubts in this uh, derivations or problem you can feel free to contact me any time okay so in the next uh, session so here this completes the base drive control base drive control both all four methods the first two methods on control and off control that we discussed in the last uh, session so next is proportional base control uh, today we discussed okay this is proportional base control and also anti saturation control or wakers control so we deduce the expressions for different uh, parameters and we solve the uh, problem on also anti saturation control okay so if you got any doubts in the, these uh, base drive control methods you can feel free to contact so next uh, in the next class we'll discuss about isolation of gate and base drive control okay what is the necessity of isolation of case and gate and base drive control okay what are the different methods are used for isolation of gate, gate and base drive controls then we'll discuss about uh, what what uh, insulated gate bipolar junction transistor this is all about mosfets we discussed so so after discussing the isolation of gate and base drive control okay uh, types of isolations then we'll move to the integrated case uh, insulated gate bipolar junction transistor igbt how igbt is constructed and other things so still then if you got any doubts here you can feel free to contact me anytime okay thank you